everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I have a video um, of me actually decorating a cake. I'm calling those speed bakes because basically I just cut out all of the extra stuff like baking buttercream um, and all the extra bits in between the steps I take to make the cake. So you get to see all the more interesting parts and it's slightly sped up so you don't actually have to watch it for as long as it actually took me to make. So today I'm actually working on an orange creamsicle cake and if you're unaware of what those are, basically it's a popsicle that is basically ice cream and then dipped in like orange flavoring. So it's got this orange coating on it. So it's like this creamy vanilla orange flavor. So for this cake, I actually baked some orange cake la layers. I actually adapted a lemon cake recipe but substituted some orange in for it instead. So using orange zest and orange juice. I did have to use more orange juice than I did like lemon juice just because orange is a little more subtle. And then I just used a traditional um, vanilla American buttercream for this cake. And what you see me doing here is actually on the side, I have a bowl of white and a bowl of orange frosting that I'm putting kind of sporadically on the cake in a random pattern to give it this nice blended color with the white and orange and you can see me starting to just spread it out and I'm actually here um, using a frosting scraper an icing scraper and trying to just get that nice smooth finish on a cake and I left in all of the passes I took when using it and it takes a lot more than what you would expect to actually smooth out a cake at least for me I know that there are people out here that could probably do it faster than me but it takes me a little while and you can also see me kind of reusing the frosting that I've scraped off to fill in any of the holes that have been left in the frosting. You may be able to see those on the side of the cake there, just some places that aren't smooth or just little holes. So this is what the icing scraper does is help smooth all that out. And I just add some more frosting. So there's a lot of scraping, adding more frosting, scraping it off, <laughs> adding more frosting. And that sounds so silly and actually in between after I've like swiped over it several times and it's gotten pretty smooth to get the final really smooth finish what I like to do is actually take my icing scraper since it's made of metal and actually run some really hot water over it so it heats up the metal and then when you run it over the frosting what happens is since it's buttercream is made of a lot of butter it actually melts a little bit and helps smooth out the sides. So you can see that it's smoothing out a lot easier at this point, and that's because I heated up my icing scraper. And so here I did the same thing with my offset spatula, and an offset spatula is what I'm holding there in my right hand. So it's not quite flat, it's got that little um, divot in it, and it just makes things a little bit easier. But I actually heated that up as well to help smooth out the top. Um, and then you can see I had some places that were uneven on the top, so I'm trying to smooth those out in a minute I'm gonna add some more frosting to it to kind of fill those in I'm not super super concerned with the top because when I decorate it I'm gonna cover up a good bit of it So that's what's always nice too is if you're gonna put decorations on the cake You don't always have to necessarily worry about all those imperfections because you're gonna end up covering it up anyways And I actually really loved how the icing came out on this cake it blended so well and I haven't done it again since I've made this cake, but I would really like to. And so here I'm just showing you that I'm using um, some kind of fancier sprinkles and they're actually from a company called Sweet Apolita. Those are my favorite sprinkle blends. I actually come from them. They're just so cute and bright and adorable. So I order those all the time. I have a whole drawer system full of bottles of sprinkles. It's maybe a little unhealthy but I love sprinkles so I'm adding those to the side of the cake and so I actually do it in a pan as you can see here scraping off all of the sprinkles it has a place for all of them to go so they don't end up all over your kitchen your counter your floor because somehow they end up going everywhere if you don't have something there to catch them and then I just use that offset spatula to just scrape off that excess and if you saw earlier I just use the offset spatula to kind of press the sprinkles into the frosting at the bottom of the cake. And then here I'm actually adding a chocolate ganache drip. Now something that I didn't show you is between putting the sprinkles on um, and doing this is I actually put this in the fridge. So when you put a ganache on a cake, typically it might be a little bit warm. And so you wanna make sure your cake is nice and cold before you put it on. That way it doesn't melt your frosting. 
And then of course you can see I had a little bit of a bottle malfunction <laughs> with it just the ganache wanting to come out. I don't know why that bottle did that, um, but I'll fix that here in a second. And that's also a plus of having your cake chilled is that buttercream, because it has a lot of butter in it, hardens in the fridge. So if you make some kind of mistake, it's easy to fix. And again, since I'm gonna be frosting on top with some decorations, I'm not super concerned with it. And you may have noticed at the beginning too, I was very slow to start the drip process. And that's because you wanna do a test strip to see how much it's gonna drip down the cake. So for me, I wanted those long drips, but if you want shorter ones, then you may have to change the consistency before you start. And what I'm doing here is I'm gonna put some swirls on top and I'm actually just using a circle cutter that I had just lying around in a drawer. And I'm actually using that to help mark out where I wanna put all the swirls on top of my cake so that I don't misplace them and have to scrape them off and start over. So it gives a nice spacing for it so that when I'm piping these swirls you see here, I know exactly where I wanna put them. And of course this covers up the little impressions that I made. So what I did was I have a piping bag full of orange buttercream and a piping bag full of white buttercream. And I'm actually gonna use both colors on these swirls on top. So I did a base of just an orange swirl. And then in a second, I'm gonna come back with the white. And I actually wanted to go ahead and comment on in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see that I have this little Tupperware full of what looks like little ice creams. And so I actually found what inspired me to do this cake was I found this really, really adorable ice cream popsicle mold. And so what I ended up doing was making them look like creamsicles. So I mentioned that those are basically um, vanilla ice cream covered in orange. And you can usually see on the bottom of the popsicle a little bit of that ice cream showing. And so I put that in the mold and then I put orange and so it created these cute little popsicles that make the ones you actually buy at the store. So I'm gonna use that as topping here in a second. And I also like the idea of having the ganache just kind of dripping like you had melting icing, ice cream all over the icing. Um, and so I thought it made, of course, a really cool effect. And then in a second, I'm also gonna add some sprinkles because I know I've already said this, I love sprinkles. I know it's a giveaway given my YouTube name, but I'm just adding some more of those on top and then I actually go back here in a second and add some more to the top of the ganache drip and I'm not gonna lie part of the reason I did that as you can see there's a few kind of rogue sprinkles that ended up on the top of the ganache so I just kind of leaned into it and just added some more sprinkles because frankly I don't think you can have too many so I'm going back and sprinkling a few on there to kind of cover up the ones that I had just kind of all over the place. Now, of course you can, as a tip, if you wanted to, like if you had a sprinkle go somewhere you don't want it to, you can use a toothpick and actually pick those out of the ganache or frosting or whatever you have. And that works really well too. And so I'm gonna finish those up here and then I'm gonna end up adding in those chocolate popsicles. And I actually was so happy with the way this came out. And that one actually looks like a bite had been taken out of it, which I really thought those were adorable. And the same thing like I did on the bottom with some white chocolate. Um, I did that where you can see the bite was taken out. I put a little bit of white there too, as if somebody had taken a bite out of it and you could see the ice cream center. And so I had a really great time making this cake. And honestly, I hope you enjoyed watching it. So be sure to come back if you like these videos and I'm about to show you some screenshots of the cake when I took pictures of it and I hope you have a really sweet day. Bye everybody. Mm -hmm.